Okay, so you're going to use a razor blade and cut the tape around the box. Don't remove the staples. And then after that, just go ahead and pull that box right off. And as you'll see, you'll be greeted with a nice, lovely jack. Okay, as you see out of the box, it comes with a nice padding uh, over the lever, the, the handle. And um, that's the bottom part. And on the top part, uh, you get the top parts uh, knurled, which is really cool. And here's a jack up close. Okay, now we're going to put the jack together, starting with the handle, the lever. And pretty much it's two-piece with the ball detent, so you'll just go ahead and slide the two pieces in. And then press that ball detent down and um, until you hear it click into the hole, into place. And then from there, uh, you can go ahead and insert the bottom part, which has a little groove on the bottom so it's uh, below the padding and just remove that nut on the jack slide it in until it can't go any further and then go ahead and um, put that nut back in place and make sure uh, to give it a pull so that you know that um, the lever is in place and it's being held by the the nut after that get a pry bar and remove the plastic uh, safety stopper uh, that prevents the jack from springing up when the lever's not in place uh, just for shipping and everything like that. So hold on to it in case you ever want to uh, ship the jack anywhere. And then uh, after that, uh, your jack is pretty much good to go. Hey, what's going on out there, everybody? So today I have a new jack. It's the Daytona long reach low profile jack from harbor freight this is not the yellow heavy duty professional daytona jack from harbor freight that's real popular that's compared to snap-on and all that stuff um this one i believe flies under the radar and i believe that this one is uh, better especially for me uh because there's three points that i want to uh, illustrate about this jack is uh one it's low profile so it sits lower uh it's long reach so it goes in deeper and then three, it raises higher. So there's three things going for it that the heavy duty professional jack um, just can't quite um, keep up with uh, in terms of, um, I guess, options you could say. Plus it has this really cool foot pedal. That's cool, I like. Um, the heavy duty uh, professional jack though, it, the welds are a little bit better, or I won't say better, but uh, they're thicker and the pistons are a little bit bigger. But other than that, um, it supports three tons. This, the long reach supports three tons. Uh, it's still a very well-made, uh, high-performance jack. So I highly recommend it. And if you have um, like a Mercedes S-Class or a Corvette, a Honda S2000, something where it, the cars sit low and you just need uh, to, to kind of pass that clearance, then this, this low-profile long reach jack is gonna just be better. And those, those cars, are, you know, for the most part are light. The S-Class is a little bit on the heavy side, but uh, three tons is gonna be more than enough uh, to lift the car. And so uh, with that said, you also have this, one thing that's really cool is you have this small plate that I like. And the one thing about the small plate versus the bigger plate, which is what you'll find on the professional heavy duty Harbor Freight Jack, is that with the small plate, you can really pick your jack points uh, more precisely. And so one good example of this is on the S-Class, you have these rubber mounts by the side skirt. And if the plate is too big, it will hit the side skirt or it'll hit the under tray. And so you kind of have to like really uh, be real precise on where you place that jack plate so that nothing gets damaged. Um, especially if you have a customer car that you're working on, that's real important as a show car something like that you know you really want to hit that uh jack point precisely and so this this does a really good job of that that's what i like um and other than that you got this really nice pump like i mentioned before that's cool so if you don't want to you know um if you're in a tight spot for example where you this can't go all the way down and it's going to like hit you know a table or something then you can just you know use your foot and pump it so that's that's really cool i like that a lot and um i'm also going to be comparing it against two other jacks that i have one being the craftsman aluminum jack another one being a lauren just steel jack and i'm going to test um, height i'm going to test clearance i'm going to test reach 
and drop time and all that good stuff. So yeah, uh, this is going to be a good video. Check it out and um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this jack is very impressive. Um, the welds, everything like that, the design, the paint, very high quality. You can see that the piston is very big, nice and strong, can handle three tons easy. The wheels are very good, supported by washers, making sure that they will not come off. And once again, you can see that the, the jack is just uh, lovely. It's, it's beautiful. Now there you see the dual piston design and the nice logo on the side letting you know that you are professional and ready to go. Epic Jack Battles of Wisdom! have both jacks the craftsman and the daytona and we're doing a test to see which one lifts uh, maxes out uh, first so as you can see the craftsman does max out first uh, because of the rapid pump but once it engages the car and starts uh, lifting the car then it goes back to normal um, but as you can see even though the daytona doesn't lift as rapidly it does go higher by a significant amount and that's what i was looking for in a new jack was just the the height um, I, I you know if you don't have a lift then you know you want to get as high as possible sometimes and so that that's kind of cool about the Daytona so it goes low and it goes high <clears throat> and then as you can see here this is the measuring tape um, that I use to demonstrate the difference in the height Okay, so now we have the Lauren versus the Daytona, and the Lauren has been, uh, I've been using this one for over 15 years, and it's a workhorse, and it's still going strong. And you'll see here that um, we're going to do another height comparison, but uh, it does go higher than the Craftsman, so that's, that's one thing that I like about it. But as you'll see, the Daytona still blows it out of the water, it doesn't even come close. But um, other than that, they're both steel jacks versus the Craftsman, whereas the Craftsman was aluminum jack, so it was lighter, and uh, it had handles on the Craftsman jack, whereas both of these jacks actually uh, don't come with handles on the side, which I find can be really convenient when you're trying to, uh, you know, move a jack or pick it up, but I, I can totally understand that, you know, you really don't want to be picking up a hundred pound jack versus the aluminum one you know that's that's way much lighter so you can pick that one up uh, as you can see here's the height difference uh, with the measuring tape again and um, the Daytona is the significant uh, winner here so uh, in this test what I'm gonna show is or what I'm gonna demonstrate is maximum pump so I was with the other jacks I was just matching I was keeping it even because some strokes were different than other than others so with this one I'm showing maximum pump and how many pumps it takes to reach maximum height on this jack um, you know so that's just kind of one of those trivial things to know uh, will it be significant in the real world probably not but it's just something to know and then and then also drop time. So now here I'm using my foot and you can see that it's pretty much the same as using the handle and um, it offers the this almost the same amount of strokes to to reach maximum height and then once again uh, that smooth drop time there. Okay, so now we're going to show you the clearance. And so the Daytona, as you can see, just goes right under the car. And uh, I mean, it just keeps going, actually. And this is on a Mercedes Benz S500 W220. So uh, you do need to jack up the car from the side. I've mentioned that in other videos. But with this jack, you don't have to do that first. You can just go straight under the car 
And actually, look at that. You can just keep going. I mean, the, this low profile jack is amazing and the long reach helps a lot too. So um, here's the Craftsman jack. And as you can see, it does get stuck. Um, and that was, that was kind of surprising. But I mean, like I've already known from the past that uh, with the W220, you cannot send a jack in deep enough to get to that engine, that jack point without lifting the car on the side first. So as you can see, the Craftsman doesn't make it, unfortunately. And then um, next, we're going to switch to the Lauren. And you're going to see that this one comes pretty close. This one, um, it almost makes it, which I was, I was pretty surprised. Um, and but once again it it doesn't quite line up with the engine mount uh the the engine jack point there so that's kind of risky and you know you definitely want to make sure that you have a good solid mounting point before you start lifting the car so uh yeah this one came close but unfortunately it didn't make it and so from there we have the clear winner which is going to be the daytona all right, so we have the Craftsman Jack, and what we're going to do is we're going to lift the car, and because the Craftsman Jack uh, could not fit under the car unless it had some support on the side, um, to make it fair, I will also do that with the Daytona Jack. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lift the car and just see uh, what this Jack can do, how many pumps it takes, and um, also uh, how smoothly it lowers and we'll do the comparison and see what the results are. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the jack is maxed out. Now we're gonna lower it, and then we're gonna switch jacks and see how the Daytona performs. All right, there you have it. You can see that the Daytona Jack lifts really high. Um, one thing I did notice is that as you're lifting uh, past a certain point, that um, they started to like develop a gap in the pressure. So there was kind of almost like just this dead space, so to speak. And um, I'll highlight it, you can kind of see. But that was kind of interesting, I don't know if that was something that 
Um, it's just normal with the Daytona jack. But another thing is that, even though I'm a little winded, I was able to jack the car up with one arm, whereas the Craftsman jack, I could not do that. I had to use two arms, and the reason is because of the dual piston design on the Daytona jack, plus the lever is a little longer, so it makes jacking up the car a li like a little easier. So that's something to consider if um, you know you're gonna be lifting the car uh, lifting multiple cars all day long, you might want to consider going with this jack just because it's going to make lifting a lot easier. So purposely, I used one arm, but in a real world scenario, you would use two and it would be um, just a pleasure to work with, I would say. But aside from that, the, the jack, um, the dead space was kind of odd. Also, when the jack was purchased uh, right out the box. Uh, it was low on hydraulic fluid, so I had to add some fluid. And I followed the instructions and everything. But upon, uh, you know, setting, releasing the valve or opening the valve so that the floor jack would stay lowered, I noticed that it was still lifting. So um, maybe there's a little bit too much fluid in there. Not sure, but definitely I followed the instructions and um, you probably just have to bleed out a little bit more than even what the instructions said or maybe it's just really cold and the fluid is just behaving differently uh, during uh, the cold season but other than that uh, the, the jack performs well it's great so uh, now let's lower it Well, there you have it. Um, it's not as smooth as the Craftsman. Uh, with the Craftsman, um, breaking breaking it free to lower is a lot smoother. So I don't know if it's just something that you know just comes with a new jack, and uh, as as you break it in, it'll get smoother over time, or if it's going to stay this way. Uh, only time will tell. But for now, it's not too big of a deal. Um, I just wanted to you know test it at the very minimum, and so I was barely moving it, but. Uh, one thing that the instruction says is you don't want to go over half a turn and so I definitely didn't do that and uh, it definitely lowered uh, probably like a quarter of a turn at most and then it would stall it would kind of stop and then I would have to loosen it a little bit more and then it would lower again so that's just something to kind of be uh, uh, you know concerned about or you know kind of just take note of but other than that works flawless And here's the lifting part that I was kind of talking about. I'll show you. So, so this is with it fully locked in, uh, in the lifting position. And I'll go ahead and lower that. And then as you can see, it's still open and it still wants to go up. So it's not too big of a deal. But okay, so now I'm just in, gonna add some more jack fluid to the jack and try to get it dialed in. So. Um, Pretty much to get access to the fill hole, you just remove the two front screws uh, for the plate and then um, just lift it up. And then that'll give you access to the fill hole, which is another screw. And then um, you'll go ahead and remove that. And so here I'm just getting the air out. Uh, in the manual, it says uh, with the valve open and, you know, of course, the screw removed. Uh, to do about 10 to 15 rapid pumps. And then after that, I just go ahead and add some fluid in. And here I'm playing around with the fluid and just trying to shake out and get all those air bubbles out and everything like that. And, um, you know, just really dial it in uh, with the proper, proper fluid level. And so um, from there, I'm just kind of playing around with it 
to to make sure that when the valve is open and everything is um, you know tightened and the screw is back in place that the jack doesn't lift when the valve is open and um, like I mentioned earlier it, it can be a little bit of an annoyance when you're trying to position the jack just right so here I'm putting everything back in place and I'm getting ready to, to test it out to see to see um, you know if, if if I dial it in just just right uh, the, so I, in my opinion the fluid is really the the secret of making the jack perform properly it's already a great jack but um, just dialing in that fluid level really helps a lot and also using a uh, fresh fluid as well um, hydraulic fluid uh, can go bad and it can you know get contaminated with water and that will uh, hinder performance so it's always good to use fresh jack fluid and as you can see I'm testing it out and this is with the fill bolt back so now I'm replace I'm removing the fill bolt just to kind of get some more air out and and maybe I have too much fluid in there so what I'm doing now is you know I'm just kinda just extending it all the way back and letting some of that fluid come out and also some of that air so you can see that puddle right there uh, where there's a lot of fluid on the floor so uh, just kinda dialing it in some more and you can have the fluid at the proper level and once you kinda extend or you know extend the piston all the way back more fluid can come out or if you do a lot of rapid pumps um, the fluid can come out as well so here I'm just kind of dialing all that in and getting everything sorted just right and um, it looks like I have everything the way I want it it's still lifting a little bit but uh, what I did later which is not in this video is that I removed just a little bit more fluid and and that helped a lot and then it was able to to stay down even while I was uh, moving the lever so uh, it really comes down to just uh, playing with that fluid but you don't want the fluid too low so that's something to keep in mind you want the fluid to be just right and as you can see here there's no more there's no more gap remember uh, earlier there was that big gap uh, like an air gap or something but now that air gap is gone so um, it looks like between playing with the the fluid level and you know just really uh, getting as much air out as possible and just being patient with that uh, sometimes it's you know not gonna be 15 pumps but um, maybe even more but yeah getting the air out and also uh, playing with the fluid is really what helps so uh, this is just a little quick tip uh, for you guys okay so final thoughts on the Daytona Jack it is awesome and I saw okay so you could see that um, when I was working on the Jack I showed you uh, just um, the process that I went through for is, um, changing out the fluid or just bleeding out the air and everything like that and what I noticed is that actually even though in the manual it says you want to take it up above the piston inside of the, um, the housing I noticed that uh, what I you know you could see in the video that what I did was I just lowered it all the way to just kind of clear out all of um, that I guess excess fluid that was causing the jack to lift even though the valve was open and then uh, after that you could see that when I was lifting the car there was no more dead space so um, when you get your jack I advise that you play around with the fluid um, just to get it to the way that um, you know it won't ha you won't have any dead space uh, when lifting the jack so or when using the jack to lift a car you won't have like that kind of dead gap um, with when using your jack so play around with the fluid get it just right to the way you want it get all the air out um, and then after that it's you're not gonna have that problem of when it's open it's gonna it's gonna lift up uh, it'll be fine and then um, you know it lowers just as smooth so it's great so other than that I mean yeah just to conclude just to wrap things up this jack is amazing I love it 
as you can see it go this was after removing the wood on the side um, because I had to use the wood on the side for all my other jacks but with this one I took the wood off and you could see that the jack goes clearly under the car I mean it's amazing so you know no more lifting the car from the side or anything like that uh, does it all so in conclusion this jack is great I highly recommend it it's definitely going to be the new tool in the arsenal so with that being said um, hope this helps you decide on what jack to choose they're both great jacks um, but if I had to choose one I would definitely choose the Daytona it's just the overall just better jack but if you're gonna be someone that's gonna you know kinda be traveling like I said and uh, you need the jack on location off-site then the Craftsman one will be better just cuz it's lighter or like if you're at a racetrack or something it's gonna just pump faster you can move it around quicker but if you're in a shop you're in a garage definitely the Daytona is gonna be the choice um, for just jacks in general so highly recommend the low profile long reach there's a there's a low profile non long reach this one's the low profile long reach highly recommend it all right see you guys next time all right well that wraps up this review and i hope it was helpful for everyone and if you have any questions just leave them down in the comment box or you know if you just kind of want to voice your comments on you know your experience with the jack uh, let me know and or let me know what jack you have and how you like it and also uh, be sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button and i'll see everyone in the next video bye